What you guys got another video on how to install Windows 11 on really old PC hardware. As you can see, we have a Dell Studio 540. This is a Core 2 Quad Q8200 CPU LGA775 socket. Now this system was running four gigabytes of DDR2, which is a really sort of old memory by today's standards but you can see the full list of the specs there you can see it only supports SATA 2 and also uh, it does have an SSD installed in here but they are the full specifications of this system so a pretty old system was released in around about April 28 2009 and you may be wondering how I got my hands on this. Well, I didn't. It belongs to a guy called Dart Nido, who's a good friend of ours, also a moderator on our Discord server. He also supports my YouTube channel by uh, joining my YouTube members group, which I really do appreciate. So he had this PC laying around, and he offered to do a test of installing Windows 11 on this system. And I said it will be an interesting video to see whether you can install Windows 11 on a non-TPM supported uh, PC. So Doc Nido was using the uh, Rufus bootable USB flash drive which had the uh, TPM and CPU uh, bypass checks built into it and I showed you how to make that USB flash drive in a previous video. I'll leave the link for that in the video description. We are now boot into the BIOS so we can boot to our USB flash drive and you can see here we're just going to push a key to enter the uh, startup process for installing Windows 11 on this old system. Now we'll uh, go right through the whole process and I will speed it up in certain places so you're not sitting around getting bored. So it shouldn't take too long to get to the full completed installation. So let's go ahead and continue with the installation process. So you'll get to this stage here and uh, what we're gonna do is click on next here. And because we're using that Rufus USB flash drive with Windows 11 on it, it will literally bypass the checks that it's required to do uh, to check the CPU and RAM and also TPM uh, settings on here. So it should bypass and you'll see it here. It does work. Some people said it doesn't work, uh, but you have to select the right um, version when you're making the USB flash drive to make it work. So you'll get to here and we're going to say we don't have a product key and we'll click on this and we'll now select the Windows 11 Pro. Click next. And it will be at this point where you'll get the message your PC is not supported. But as you can see, Rufus has allowed us to bypass this section and now we can install Windows 11. So we're going to just delete all of these partitions to create unallocated space and then we can install it to that uh, drive there. So we're just going to delete these and we'll move on to the next button here. And this will go ahead and install uh, Windows 11 here. Now I'll speed this process up. Uh, because this will take a bit of time. So we'll just uh, go through this very quickly. So I'll speed this process up. You won't miss any of the installation process. It's just the fact that I don't want to sit there and make you watch a whole video of installing it really slowly because it does take a bit of time. So we're getting to the stage where we're going to create an account now. So we'll go through here and you can see it's going through this with no problems at all. And this is a really old computer. That was created in 2009. So you can see this is a DDR2 system. And believe it or not, this was working pretty well with Windows 11 on it. And this computer was built in a time when TPM wasn't a thing. It didn't have TPM uh, on this system. So there wasn't even TPM 1.2. And uh, it's still installed in Windows 11. Of course, we've had to bypass the checks that... Uh, Microsoft have put in place for their requirements, which are obviously uh, TPM 2.0 and also certain CPUs. And as you can see, Windows 11 is now installed on this really old computer and it's working pretty well. Everything is opening up OK. And we've got a really old system. Let me just show you some of the specifications here so you can see it is the actual old computer that we've got this installed on so you can see that it is that this old Dell uh, 540 and uh, we'll go to uh, specifications and we'll take a look there first so let's go ahead and uh, go there and take a look at some of the settings here I just want to get the um, the resolution set to 1920 by 1080 
We're using onboard graphics here as well, I think. I can't remember whether he said it was a graphics card or onboard graphics. I think it was onboard graphics. So let's take a look at the system specs here for the system. So we'll go into system here and take a look at the CPU and RAM and stuff from in here. So you can see it is actually this computer that's running it. And it's amazingly zippy for an old computer like this. You've got a Q8200 uh, CPU in here and four gigabytes of RAM. So there you go. That's that's the actual system right there running. And you can see the Studio 540 up the top. And I'll give you some more system specs in a second so you can see the BIOS when it was created and all that sort of stuff. So let's take a quick look in system information here. We can take a look at this. Click on here. And here we have the system information for the computer. And there you can see the model is a Studio 540. And you can see it's the Dell uh, PC there, 2009, 25th of the 8th, 2009, the BIOS date. And you can see it's set to Legacy. And you can see all the settings there of this old PC running Windows 11 in 2025 with no problems whatsoever. And again, you could put up to 8 gigs of RAM into this motherboard. It will take 8 gigs and it will probably do just fine. Now, of course, it's going to have its limitations due to the age of the computer. But it just goes to show you it will run Windows 11 perfectly fine. And it's had no issues at all. We're running 4 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. So, and it's pretty zippy. It's got a, a solid state drive in here. Everything's opening up perfectly fine here. You can see no problems at all. Let's just take a look at the CPU and the memory usage and things like that. So we can see it down there. And there you go, 3% utilization. You've got the uh, processes that are running there and the threads and everything else on there. Now you may be wondering why it's a little bit washed out the image. And that's because he was literally capturing the screen through a video capture device and I was then recording that screen in Discord uh, which obviously will reduce the quality but he was seeing perfectly high definition images and I was getting a reduced quality but it just goes to show you uh, the PC is functional and working you can see it clearly there it doesn't need to be super high definition for you to understand that it is running so Microsoft's strict rules on uh, CPUs that add Intel's 8th gen or newer or Ryzen 2nd uh, gen and up could be used with Windows 11. So if you had a 7th gen uh, processor, Intel processor, that wouldn't work either or even a 6th gen and they were perfectly serviceable still in 2025. Uh, unfortunately, they don't uh, meet the cut and they will not be officially allowed to run Windows 11. You'll have to use the bypass uh, method to get it installed and use it and then there's no guarantee that you'll be able to use the security updates in the future you can do it at the moment this will fully update as i'll show you in a second but at the moment uh, it's letting you update windows 11 but i've got a funny feeling that microsoft are moving towards blocking windows updates uh, for these uh, older systems but that doesn't mean that you won't be able to manually update uh, Windows 11 if you wanted to do that I don't think they will be able to block uh, manual updates for these so we'll just show you TPM here there is no TPM on this system it was before they started adding these in so you can see there is no TPM as you can see here I'll take you into the BIOS as well so you can see the BIOS so you can understand why some people are very upset with the fact that they can't install Windows 11 when Windows 11 clearly works on old systems like this. Um, but I suppose really they have an option of using Windows 10 uh, up until 2025, October 2025, whereas they'll probably extend that as well at some point. But you're going to end up with a lot of PCs that are going to end up you know, obsolete very, very soon. And I think the reason for it is probably Microsoft don't want to support old legacy hardware anymore and get caught up with you know patching and making sure they're all patched it costs money to obviously support older systems as well where with the new windows 11 they will be able to obviously concentrate on uh, newer hardware and newer newer security measures whereas you can't implement some of these on older systems because they don't have tpm on some of these old systems but you can see the uh studio 540 there and the bios information there as well for this old system 
Now, I'm not saying for one second that this system uh, is capable of doing daily tasks in 2025. It's just showing you that it does still work in 2025. And depending on the level of what you do on your computer will determine, uh, you know, what this computer is capable of. Obviously, this is a very old computer. It's 2009. But you can see it is running Windows 11. And there is going to be some limitation to what this computer can actually do in 2022. And again, if you wanted to use this with Windows 10, you could happily use it if you are just, say, surfing the web and doing some emails or whatever it is you're doing on your PC. But there will be some limitations to what this processing power and what this can actually do for you uh, in 2022. So it's not going to be a hardcore gaming system. It's not going to be out there rendering massive big videos. Probably 4K uh, viewing streaming is going to be having trouble doing that, I should imagine. Um, but it does work and it is functional. And uh, you could run Linux on here as well. But depending on what you're trying to achieve with old systems like this in the modern day. The main point here is, is showing you that it does work. And I think the, the real annoying part for some people is the people that have, say, a 7th gen or a 6th gen uh, CPU, which is an i7 or something along those lines, with a good GPU in there, and they can still game on it and still do a lot of modern day tasks on those systems. They are being blocked from using uh, Windows 11 officially. And I think that is the main point here. Some of these older obsolete uh, systems, you can understand the reasoning for uh, not allowing them to use Windows 11, uh, but they can still use Windows 10 up until 2025. And they'll probably extend that, like I've said already. So I just wanted to quickly uh, show you some Windows updates here to show that it is working. We're just going to quickly enable uh, the internet here and we will then uh, get the downloads and I'll see if you can download updates for this system. So that's now enabled. And what we'll do is go to the update section and we'll check for updates and we will download them and get them installed on here. Now, how long is this going to be before Microsoft decide to block security updates? That's what they've been threatening for a while about blocking security updates for older hardware. They're already putting watermarks in on older systems for the later builds that are coming. So if they're doing this already, then how long is it going to be before they start blocking some of these security updates on unsupported hardware? That's the thing that concerns me for people that have already upgraded on their main system to Windows 11 using the bypass method. So I'll skip some of these downloads here and let them download. And then we can get these installed on the system. As you can see, it's now updating the system. So it does work as of, uh, you know, the 24th of the 2nd, 2022 on old unsupported hardware. The updates are all still working. So rather than installing Windows 11 on unsupported virtual machine, I wanted to show you installing uh, Windows 11 on real hardware. So big thanks to Dark Nido for supplying the old computer for me to be able to uh, show you this. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see any other sort of uh, old uh, hardware related videos like these ones uh, doing old stuff, then let me know and I'll have a chat with Dark Nido to see whether we can uh, make that sort of content for you. And uh, because he does have some old legacy hardware laying around which he can use for uh, sort of projects like these to show you guys that it does work on real old hardware just like this stuff. So there's a couple of more things I want to do here. Just want to quickly check for updates to make sure we're fully updated and we are now fully updated on this system. And I also want to show you that it actually activated on this old computer as well, which is absolutely amazing for an old system like this. We did manage to get it activated on here as well. So let me just quickly go to the activation center here, as you can see, and we are fully activated on a 2009 with DDR2 and a really old processor. It's all running perfectly fine here. Anyway, I think that is going to be about it for this one. So again, a big thanks to Dark Nido. Now remember, if you like this type of content, maybe check out some of my other videos. I've got over 2,500 technology videos on how to upgrade stuff, how to fix stuff, how to build computers and all sorts of other content like that. 
Also consider subscribing, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification and click all. If you want to support me a little bit financially, you can join my YouTube members group and use one of the tiers that I've got set up here. You get some extra perks by joining my YouTube members group as well. So read all the instructions on the screen there. You can cancel at any time. Anyway, that is going to be about it for this video. I just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. Your names are rolling up on the screen right now. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall see you again for another video real soon. Hope to see you on the Discord server. Bye for now.